Hello, my dear children. Welcome to today's class. So, what are we learning today? Today, we will be learning about our shelters. So, this is a chapter number 15, all about shelter. So, all of us need some or the other shelter to live in. The shelter, our house is the most, it's the coziest place we can be in. So, what are the different types of shelters? we are going to study in this chapter. A house is a building that provides us shelter from extreme weather conditions. It also helps us to keep safe us from danger and in earlier times humans lived in caves or on the trees. So what is a shelter? A shelter is our house. A house protects us from harsh weather conditions, from heat, cold, rain, from wild animals, from thieves, from other dangers which are outside. So the early men, with, when there were no building materials, when there were no buildings, they still found a shelter to live in. Either they used to live in caves or on trees. House in the past were different from the houses that are present now that we see today. Now houses are of different types. There are different types of houses which we see in various parts of India according to the climate. So uh, India is a diverse country. It has so many different climates. Some are hilly regions, some areas are near to the sea, some areas uh, are plain and according to every climate, according to every area, every season, uh, there are houses, different type of houses. All right. So uh, then there are so many villages also in India and then there is, it also depends upon the availability of the material on which uh, according to which houses are being built. So, how are the houses in rural areas? Almost everywhere in rural areas, the houses are made of things like mud, stone, bamboos, dried leaves. The roofs were either thatched with straw and leaves or were made of wood and stone. And this type of houses were called huts. So, when we go to rural areas, the people, they have made their houses with mud, straw, wood, leaves. The uh, roof of the houses, they are being tied together. The leaves, the dried leaves, they are being tied together. Bamboos are being tied together. Such uh, roofs are called thatched roofs. So, we can see these kind of houses in rural areas. These houses are also called huts. And these are temporary houses. These are the kacha houses. If sometimes any big earthquake or flood comes uh, or even very strong storm comes, the kacha houses can be easily broken. A hut is a temporary house. It is also called kacha house. It had only one big room. The cooking area would be outside the house and separate. Cooking was done on mud stoves using cow dung during cakes and firewood. Okay, so uh, in the huts what used to happen? Nowadays even in villages uh, houses have been modified. But if we talk the earlier ruler, rural areas, the houses were like this. They were the huts, they were kacha houses, they were temporary houses. And the kitchen was mostly outside the house because inside there was one big hall, one big room where all the people lived together in one room only. So when the cooking was done outside the house, uh, the chulas, the stoves were made of uh, mud. And... A uh, fire was produced with the cow dunk or with firewood. Okay. Each house has its own well or hand pump in the courtyard. So, uh, the, every house, it used to have its own well, its own hand pump to dig out underground water. All of the women of the house collect water from nearby streams, lakes and ponds. However, life in villages is changing. So, if I 
if we talk about earlier villages village life in villages earlier women go used to travel long distances to the nearby stream lake to collect water in earthen pots and then they used to bring uh, water to their houses and uh, the houses the people who were a little on a higher scale uh, they had a well they they had their own well and their hand pump through which they used to draw underground water but nowadays the life in villages is also changing people in rural areas or villages have started building houses with brick steel and cement that means now their houses are becoming pakka houses from kacha houses earlier there was no electricity and water supply in rural areas but in present there is a good electricity and water supply in villages in present most houses and villages have electricity and use various electronic items like fans coolers they also have a tap water bringing water directly to the houses now they do not have to walk or travel to long distance to um, uh, fetch water from the water streams now they have uh, taps in their houses which government has set and the water comes in the taps through pipelines now this is about the changes in the houses in the rural areas from past to present now how are or how were the houses were in urban area most houses in urban areas were made from cement wood bricks iron rod steel uh, they are called pakka houses houses in urban areas had many rooms with high ceiling and large windows due to increasing population and shortage of space so because uh, most of the people from the rural areas are also shifting to the urban areas there is less space in uh, urban areas so what do people do they make high buildings they make multi story houses they have around four four floors in one building only and in those uh, in floors there are many rooms with high ceilings and uh, this is because of the shortage of space in one building only a lot of people can accommodate a lot of people can live under one roof many tall buildings are built in cities and towns these days each building has many houses called flats or apartments so if we talk about individual houses people can build up to four floors but in the buildings which are very tall they have like 60 70 floors in one apartment and these are called separate separate flats these flat apartments are locating located in housing societies and they provide all modern amenities like lift park car parking areas and security nowadays swimming pool badminton court and various sports also are available in these housing societies a lot of people in india still live in villages okay so please write in which house you live kacha house or pakka house do you have electricity in your house i'm sure you have electricity in your house okay now what are slums we just talked about kacha house pakka house houses in rural areas houses in urban asia areas but now what are slums along with every town city or village there are some areas in which there are very small small uh, houses uh, such small houses that uh, only uh, you know very small number of people can live in it there are very less fit facilities over there and these are called slum areas so many people in big cities cannot afford own house or even rent one due to poverty so who who live in slum areas people who cannot afford a very good house 
uh, or uh, rent a house in rural areas. So in rural areas, uh, sorry, in urban areas. So in big towns and cities, when people cannot afford to buy a house, a good house, or even rent a house, they go and live in such an area which are called slum areas. So due to poverty, they are forced to live in slum areas. They are overcrowded. There is often a shortage of housing facilities. The houses in slums are made of bricks and mud, thin and other cheap material. So they are not very durable. The houses, the walls of the houses are not very thick. The living conditions of slum areas are unhygienic as most slums do not have any facilities like electricity, water supply, sanitation, drainage facilities. Sometimes there is, there are no um, yeah, sanitation facilities, there are no toilets, there are no bathrooms. So, they are really unhygienic areas, but people still live in large numbers in slum areas because of overpopulation in India and uh, due to poverty. These areas are illegal and thus face a danger of getting demolished at any point of time. Government do not allow slum areas in uh, near the towns and cities. These are unauthorized illegal areas. They have a danger of being demolished anytime. Demolished means government can give an order to clear out all the slums, all the houses uh, where these people are living. Okay. Now comes the animal shelter. We have talked a, lo a lot about where humans live. Let's talk about animal shelter now. Animals also need shelter like human beings. Yes. So some animals live in water. Some of them live on land. Some of them mostly spend their life in air. Some of them live in on the trees. So these are the shelters where animals live. So, just like human beings, uh, to protect themselves from changing weather condition and enemies and to take rest, animals need shelter. Natural environment in which an animal lives is known as habitat. So, the natural environment, that means a polar bear can survive in a very colder area and the natural environment for a polar bear is uh, the polar region and that's why it's the habitat for polar bear. If we bring the polar bear in a zoo and create that kind of environment in which the polar bear can survive, that is not the natural habitat of polar bear. It has been created. Okay. Animals live in different types of habitat. So let's learn about them. Uh, the animals living on land, they are called terrestrial animals. So animals that live on land, they are called terrestrial animals. For example, elephant, cat, lion, many more. Okay. Now elephants really have thick skin and they do not rest much. They sleep for only two to four hours in a day. Now, what are arboreal animals? Arboreal animals are the animals who live on trees like sloth, chimpanzee, squirrel, koala, right? Animals that live on trees are called arboreal animals. Now comes the aerial animals, the animals which spend most of their time in air. So, they have capability to fly in air and they are called aerial animals. For example, bat, birds, every bird and butterfly. Uh, apart from few birds like ostrich, emu, penguin, uh, kiwi, most of the birds are aerial animals and insects are also aerial animals. Now comes the aquatic animals, the animals which live in water. They are called aquatic animals. Uh, so, that live in or near ponds, lakes, seas, ocean, they are called aquatic animals. For example, starfish, octopus, a dolphin. Now, dolphin literally sleep using half their brain so the other half can be active and alert. Wow! They are the most intelligent animal also, dolphins. 
Now comes the amphibians. The amphibians are the animals which can live both on land and in water. Okay. So, for example, frog, salamander, toad. Now comes the shelters. Bird shelter. Almost all the birds build their nest for shelter to keep themselves warm, to lay eggs and protect their young ones from danger. So, birds lay eggs. Where would they lay eggs? They would build their nest of their own to uh, lay their eggs, to rest, to keep them warm, to feed their young ones and to keep them away from the dangers of the enemies. Now, what are the materials that birds use to make their house, make their shelter, make their nest? They use thread, twig, leaves, grasses to build their nest. They usually build nest in high and hidden places where their enemies cannot reach easily. Different birds build different type of nest during using different type of material. Alright, so birds are very smart. They know that uh, what kind of beak do they have and uh, how, what type of claws do they have. What So, which kind of uh, nest uh, they can build and according to that they collect the different materials and build a, a nest according to them. They are like wonderful, they are very creative. Now, birds like sparrow make their nest in different places such as in the cracks of the building, cupboard tops and in ventilators also. Even uh, a pigeon does that. Okay. A tailor bird is a bird which actually sews its nest like a tailor. It uses its beak like a needle and it sews the leaves together to make a beautiful nest. Okay. So, tailor bird makes its nest using broad leaves that are stitched together also uses its needle-like beak to stitch the leaves. Now, woodpecker has a, a chisel beak and a very sharp pointed one. It can actually, when it uh, pegs the uh, wood, it can make a big hole in the tea, tree branch and that's why it makes its nest in the bark of the tree. So, a woodpecker makes a hole in a tree trunk with its beak and builds nest there. Then comes a wonderful creator, our weaver bird. So, female weaver bird, it weaves the nest beautifully just like uh, uh, our grandmothers weave sweaters, the pullovers. The weaver bird weaves its nest. So, it looks... Uh, um, a female weaver bird looks at all the nests and chooses the one she likes the best. The bird uses twigs and grasses to build the nest. So, weaver bird's nest looks like this. It hangs from the branch and, and there is a small opening in it through which it enters the nest. Now, these are the key terms that we learned today. Courtyards, it's an open area in a house which is surrounded by walls. Amenities, uh, they are the useful features of a building or a house. So, when a housing society are providing all the amenities, that means they are providing all the facilities for uh, a good living, a uh, good electricity, a uh, good water supply, the sports, all the other things also. Unhygienic means dirty, likely to catch diseases. Demolish means to destroy a building. Arboreal means to live in trees. Also remember that a house is a building that provides us shelter. People live in different types of houses. Houses in villages are simple. Pakka houses are very strong and durable. Poor people in cities live in slums. Animals that live in natural environment is known as their habitat. Birds built nest for shelter to keep themselves warm, lay eggs and protect their young ones. Birds use twigs, leaves and grasses to make their nest. A female weaver bird looks at all the nests and chooses the one she likes the best. Now let's complete this exercise and see what have we learnt in this lesson. Choose the correct option. A hut is a temporary house called 
Kacha house. Houses in rural areas are made up of mud and stones. Dash animals live in or near ponds, aquatic. Due to poverty, many people are forced to live in slums. Animals that live on trees are called arboreal animals. Now let's decode the picture and answer the following questions. Name the animal, it's a monkey. Which type of shelter they live on? Trees, that is why they are arboreal animals. This animal like to eat bananas. Take the correct option, cross off the wrong ones. Birds are aquatic animals, false. Courtyard is an open area in a house, correct. A tailor bird makes a hole in a tree, false. Birds like sparrows make their nest in different places, correct. Amphibians live on both land and in water, correct. You have to give examples, two examples of each. Terrestrial animals, we can write camel and cow. Arboreal monkey and squirrel. Aerial bat birds. Aquatic starfish and starfish and dolphin you can write. Amphibians, frog, salamander, Now you have to answer the following questions in your notebook yourself. We can discuss over here in short. What is a slum? Slum are the unauthorized areas where people uh, and these are overcrowded areas where people are forced to live due to poverty. These places are in towns and they are unhygienic and they do not have any amenities. How does people live in houses of rural areas? Previously, people were using in kacha houses, uh, but now people have started living in pakka houses. Classify animals. Now, uh, you can explain a little bit that how previously people in rural areas used to live, like they had wells, hand pumps, and uh, uh, women used to draw water from stream well, they had kacha houses, and how now they have. Uh, been changed and they have been developed into pakka houses now they have better amenities tap water and all those things classify animals on the basis of their natural habitats they are terrestrial animals aquatic animals arboreal animals aerial animals and amphibians how do people live in houses of urban areas so they live in pakka houses in uh, Big housing societies also, you can talk about the multi-stories, the amenities and you can talk a little about slums which are attached to the urban areas. Now these are some fun based questions which you can do yourself with your family, with your friends and have fun with the chapter. Now uh, explore the importance of shelter for human beings. Why do we need shelter? So make a project on that, pasting a lot of pictures of different types of houses. Surf internet to collect more information. No, and you can also build a bird house. So this activity begins by cutting out a small entrance on one side of milk carton. So there is a milk carton. If you do not have a milk carton in your house, you can buy one, use the milk and use the empty milk carton to uh, build a bird house. And then there are steps given over here to decorate that house, to build that beautiful house. Please follow the step, work in groups and make beautiful bird house. Okay, and these are the materials needed in this activity. Empty milk carton, craft supplies like scissor, paint, glue. And please also you can take a help of someone elder. String, twine, hole punch, popsicle sticks, bird seeds, colors, etc. 
All right. Now, with the help of elders, prepare a set of picture cards or magazine cutout showing different types of houses. Distribute the card to your neighborhood friends and ask them to sort the houses into two categories: urban houses and rural houses. And depending on their performance, just rate them that if, uh, whether they are being able to classify it or not. So I hope you have learned a lot about shelter that we live in, uh, the animals live in, the classification of various shelters, and you will keep learning, keep shining. Bye bye.